Okay. Hey guys, so right now I'm going to talk about the urogenital system, just like I had done with the gastrointestinal tract and the circulatory system. Um, some of you had asked me if all the extra information that I tell you on these slides is going to be on the final exam. It is not. It's just information that is beneficial to you for future reference. The stuff that you need to know for this final exam is going to be all that we went over in class, the stuff on those charts that I had made for you, everything that you've had to identify, and that's on the videos of the dissections here on this YouTube page. And then, of course, anything out of the manual, including definitions and any important information. So what is the urogenital system? Well, the urogenital system is including both reproductive and excretory organs because they share common ducts, such as, say, the mesonephric duct, for instance, and, of course, the cloaca or the urethra. Now, the excretory system in itself involves the kidney, ureter, the urinary bladder, and the urethra. And this is the order that filtrate is going to go in to be excreted out of the body. So, let's so once again, the kidney functions in salt and water balance. So it's filtering uh, waste and producing what's called urine. Okay, so blood is carried to the kidney via that renal artery. And of course, it's leaving the kidney through the renal vein. Now, all the urine that's being created in the kidney is going to be collected within the collecting ducts. Now, the kidney has two parts that you need to know. You need to know the cortex and the medulla. The cortex is the outer portion of the kidney. It's typically lighter in color. And the medulla is the center portion of the kidney. In the cortex, that's where the glomerulus is located. And of course, the collecting tubules, such as the proximal convoluted tubule and the distal tubule. And the medulla has the ascending loop of Henle, and that's where water, ions, and nutrients are going to be reabsorbed. Now, the ureter is the duct system that's going to carry that urine that's been collected in the collecting tubules to the urinary bladder. So the urine is going to collect in those tubules. It's going to enter what's called the renal pelvis, and from there it's going to go through the ureter to the urinary bladder. Now the urinary bladder is this musculature that collects and stores that urine until it's excreted through the urethra. And sort of like the pyloric and cardiac sphincter of the stomach, there's muscular sphincters that are controlling the passage of that urine to the urethra. So that's all you need to know about the excretory system. But the urogenital system also encapsulates the reproductive systems as well. So we're going to start with the male reproductive system. I want you to, for a second, look at the picture that's on here. It's showing you the testis and the seminiferous tubules, of course, the epididymis and the efferent ductules, and then the vas deferens as well. So we all know the male gonad is the testes. In most mammals, these testes descend into the scrotal sac. And um, basically during development, this, the testes, right, they actually start out in the abdominal cavity, but then they descend from the abdominal cavity into the scrotal sac. Um, and I think what's going on is there's this um, thing called a gubernaculum, and it is what's pulling the testes through the abdominal cavity. I think the name is really funny, gubernaculum. Now, sperm is produced in the testes. It's actually produced in those seminiferous tubules. Also within the testes are what's called Leydig cells. They're producing and secreting testosterone. And then, of course, Sertoli cells, which are nourishing the developing sperm. Now, the efferent ductules that you see in this picture, they're going to carry the sperm to the epididymis. So sperm is actually stored in the epididymis, and the epididymis is a really, really long portion of the reproductive tract, and this is where that sperm is going to mature and it's going to develop before it then passes through the deferens. Now, sometimes you'll see the deferens called the ductus deferens, sometimes you'll see it called the vas deferens. Now, the epididymis in itself, once again, is typically just this long structure, and it sort of delays the release of sperm and gives that sperm time to mature before it's released into the vas deferens. 
Okay, so once again, the vas deferens, it's that duct that's carrying the sperm from the epididymis to what's called the ejaculatory duct. And then if some sperm storage will also occur within the vas deferens. They have sort of these little, it has little cavities where the uh, sperm can sit. And one important thing to note is that sperm is moved through the deferens via what's called peristalsis. It's the same as within the stomach. It's sort of, or, well, not the stomach, but like the esophagus. It's this wave-like movement that's pushing food down within the digestive tract. In this case, it's wave-like movement that's pushing down the sperm through the deferens. Now, the ejaculatory duct is the duct that's containing those seminal vesicles. This is where the deferens meets the urethra. And these vesicles, they store and produce some of the semen or the liquid portion of the ejaculate. Now, the liquid produced here, it has, once again, an alkaline pH, and it's neutralizing the acidity of the vagina because the sperm cannot survive in the acidic environments. So neutralizing this acidity ensures sperm survival, which is obviously what you want. Um, it also contains fructose, so that feeds the sperm cells. Um, another accessory reproductive gland that you need to be aware of is the bulbarithral gland. It's also neutralizing the acidity of the vagina. So the sperm will eventually get carried through the urethra and ejaculated from the penis. Okay, so that is the male reproductive tract in a nutshell. Relatively easy. So let's go through the female reproductive tract. Now the female gonad is the ovary. This is where eggs or ova are produced. Now the females are born with all the eggs that they're ever going to produce within their lifetime. And this all begins in utero, so it's prenatally. Now what happens is that the primordial follicles get suspended in prophase one until a female reaches puberty. Once the female reaches puberty, they're gonna continue meiotic development and then begin going through particular follicular stages. One thing to note is that oogenesis, which is the process of producing an egg, produces only one egg at a time. So one germ cell equals one egg. However, in males, spermatogenesis, which is the production of sperm, produces four sperm cells for every one germ cell. So producing an egg is very costly, and we only do it one at a time, whereas males can produce many sperm every couple of hours, essentially. We produce one egg over a menstrual cycle, like 27 days. Now, ovulation is the... Um, the act of the graphene follicle is the mature follicle that ruptures. Um, it's also the secondary follicle. So you'll see it either called the mature graphene follicle or the secondary follicle. In either case, when this follicle ruptures, that is the act of ovulation. And then the follicle is going to go into the fallopian tube. Now, the fallopian tube has what's the, there are these little fimbrae on the ostium. And those little, they're like little hairs, as you can see in the picture. They're going to catch that egg and pull it into the oviduct. So the ovary and the fallopian tubes are not necessarily attached. These little fimbrae actually have to catch the egg and pull it through the oviduct. And then, of course, the tube is going to carry the egg to the uterus. Now, fertilization actually takes place within the fallopian tube, but then once fertilized, the ovum is gonna travel into the uterus. Now the fertilized egg begins developing in the uterus. This is where implantation occurs. And implantation is when the egg adheres to the wall of the uterus, and there will be some cramps and possibly bleeding. Now the uterus is essentially the womb. So this is what's enlarging to accommodate the developing fetus. And it actually goes from 2.5 ounces to two pounds. And of course, also placenta is forming in here that's nourishing the developing fetus as well. And then of course, after what, three trimesters, the baby pops out. So this is essentially what you need to know for the urogenital system. Okay, so you need to know all these different organs. You need to know the pathway of the male reproductive system. You need to know the pathway of the female reproductive system. And you need to know the pathway of the excretory system. Okay, now all this 
little information like the uterus goes from 2.5 ounces to 2 pounds during pregnancy, you don't have to know that for the exam. It's just something that you might be interested in. All right, hope